Hey, this is Steve Good on the Coin Chat with Yuri Cataldo, and we are back with Malcolm Cassell from Wax Token. Welcome back, Malcolm. It's good to see you. Hey, good to see you, Steve. Hey, or, Yuri. Or is it digital? Hey, or it's like a digital version of you today. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm, I'm fully pimped out. With, uh... <laughs> I know. You look like... I know. Oh, wait, like, my hand disappeared. Oops. Yeah. It did. It did. You're I kind of blending you. into the background. It's a digital yeah, version yeah. of Malcolm. You can find him on the Wax Exchange. He's uh, mm -hmm. selling for about 12 Wax tokens right now, which is probably not very much. But... Beep, beep, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm sorry, Malcolm. It's because your hand disappeared. I had to say that. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. So there's, um, <laughs> well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on with you guys. You've had your main net. You've got news. So... Be better. Okay. Be better. Oh, there it is. Yes. Yes. Yeah, nice. Better. Great. Cool. Yeah. So there was a bunch of stuff that's going on. So where, where should we start? I know you had a bunch of things you wanted to tell us about as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since we talked, obviously the main net went live, that was June 30th and yep. went live without a hitch. I mean, we've got block production going on and the chain has been up and running and it's been a huge sigh of uh, relief that like after a year and a half, almost two years of talking about a chain, we actually have a chain, mm -hmm. uh, which is super cool. And uh, there is a really excited community of guilds, which in EOS terminology are called block producers, but in, in WAX terminology, they're called guilds. Huge community of guilds who have come out and said, we want to be part of what you're doing. And we love the enthusiasm. There are many dApps that have already been ported over to, to the WAX chain. Uh, it, for folks who have EOS dApps, they basically change one line of code and redeploy. Uh, so it, it couldn't be simpler. Wow. Uh, and it's great because if they've written a whole bunch of code, it's like write once and use twice. So it's really yeah. actually yeah. great for folks who've written dApps. Cool. Uh, and, and I think the enthusiasm is, is really quite high because one, there's a, a, a governance structure which is related to what you contribute to the system. So in mm -hmm. other words, the more you do, the higher up you become in terms of your ranking for producing blocks. Like that's the way we've designed our system. Now, pe people aren't actually producing, uh, third parties aren't producing blocks yet. They will be soon. We've updated our, or plan to release an update to 1.8, which is the latest version of uh, the EOS ecosystem. Uh, we'll actually be live with it before the EOS main chain itself. Uh, so that's coming wow. you know, in the next, in the next cool. week. Pretty cool. And as soon as that's done, then uh, we'll be in a position to start inviting uh, the third party block producers in. But uh, many, many have already registered and they have built their own telegram chats and they're communicating and sharing information and very enthusiastic. Um, I just got back from, from Hong Kong last week. We did a meetup with uh, a bunch of DAP developers and block producers and they're, they I mean, I presented for probably 30, 40 minutes and there was an hour and a half, two hours of questions. So they were wow. like really engaged, Wow, which was, which was great. Um, and then um, uh, we have a meetup next week in Toronto and I've done a bunch on video to like Seoul and Tel Aviv and we have, probably 10, 15 more cities we're going to do over the next couple of months. So there's a lot of folks who will be reaching out to and working with who are already uh, showing a lot of enthusiastic support for, for Wax's uh, new blockchain. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So actually, Excellent. let me, let me just yeah. ask two questions about that. Um, one is tell us about this EOS competition that you guys have had running on running for a while, because I've seen that and I've watched the video, which is short, but very, very, you know, like exciting. Like you want to get in on it. Too bad I'm not a programmer, yeah. or I might yeah. have done. Our, well, yeah, our video, yeah, our video team is fantastic. They just really are producing great content. It's exciting and engaging. Yeah, it is. Um, so, so, so we have a worker proposal system planned, which will actually allow proposals to be presented and then ultimately voted on, and then they'll receive compensation to build stuff. Uh, and in, in lieu of that system, which is not yet live, we've done a contest. And a contest is something we done quite often on opskins you know it's, it's something we're, we're really comfortable with and basically it was hey you know we set aside twenty five thousand dollars to incentivize folks to take their dap and move it over to wax and so we got a lot of fantastic entries and uh it's it was it was a well-received contest uh and i think you know for dap developers to be like wait a second you're, you're just like you know, doing this as like a contest, it was a little bit new to them because they weren't kind of like used to that, uh, that sort of system. But we, we did it because, you know, it's something we, we like to do. People really enjoy contests. Yeah, yeah it was like $25,000. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there yeah. was a $10,000 prize and then a bunch of $5,000 prizes. Right. And some models, so, yeah. 
So Great. do you have any examples of what kind of dApps you're seeing coming in just to give people an idea of what they, if they, if they wanted to go and build their own dApp, for example, what, what kinds of things can you build in the, in the Wax environment? So the cool thing about Wax is it has really two layers. So think of it as the blockchain layer, which is like mm -hmm. any other blockchain. So if you look at uh, EOS, all the things that exist on EOS can run on Wax, right? Because back, Wax is backwards compatible. So I think the first dApp that got launched was essentially a RAM uh, calculator and the like ability to um, see what RAM costs were. Uh, and that was the very first dApp I think ported over. Uh, but it could be anything from literally a DEX that trades tokens to uh, a game that uh, a trivia game. It could be uh, tools like uh, Blocks.io uh, launched, uh, I think it was Wax.Blocks.io, which was a fantastic uh, interface. So it was a block explorer, plus you could stake and vote and all that sort of thing. Squirrel, uh, SQRL, was, another, was a wallet that launched. It also allowed you to do voting and staking. So just lots of things, one over after another. We'll be launching actually a portal with a lot of links to some of the really fantastic. Oh, okay. We just so you'll have like a marketplace or something. Yeah, well, it's like our DAP store, right? And, okay, and cool. Even we launched uh, yesterday or announced yesterday the launch with EOS links. Uh, so that's a really easy to use wallet. It's both iOS and Android. Desktop is coming imminently. Uh, integrated with Wax. So there's just a long list of wallets and other tools and so forth. So that's sort of, let's call it the blockchain layer. The second layer is what I call the game layer. So we've built a bunch of microservices and that service layer allows anyone to talk to the chain without actually having to know anything about chain programming, smart contracts or anything. So think of it as just APIs and it's like, I can use APIs to create an account, I can use APIs. And, and I, I changed my shirt. Oh, cool. so we're back for part That's two. Right. Um, yeah. Sorry for, sorry for the for the uh, confusion, everybody. But um, yeah, my PC crashed in the middle of a one of our best episodes ever. So I, I apologize for that. And magically, being that you know Malcolm's in the digital world, at the click of a fingers, mm -hmm. he's now got a white shirt. Yes. <laughs> <He does. laughs> wardrobe change. So you were you were telling us <laughs> uh, telling us all about <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> telling us about guilds. And the idea that uh, it, it it evolved over time and it had become you know different a bit from the white paper uh, in terms of the uh, the way it works, um, and that's where I lost you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries, no worries. So yeah, so guilds are basically the equivalent of a block producer or a node operator for other chains. So right. um, yeah, so it's pretty pretty simple, awesome. pretty, easy to understand, pretty easy to understand. Very cool. So now, was there some news that you wanted to um, to let our listeners and and uh, viewers know about that would be something yeah. of any significance? Yeah, actually, yeah. So, so uh, as we we announced before that we would be doing some things with the fan controlled football league, uh, which is a really cool application where fans can actually control the plays that the coaches choose uh, for uh, their teams to run like it's an actual football league real football players and so forth so they're they're um going to be using wax for a lot of different parts of that ecosystem and one of the things that's going on is a uh, tokenization of merchandise so we call those virals mm -hmm. on our mm -hmm. on our system and so mike tyson is actually uh working with uh, fan control football league as one of the team owners and appearing on jimmy wow. kimmel and will be showing off uh, some some viral some viral um, collectibles so like gloves oh, cool. that he signed uh, boxing uh, boxing shoes and of course some footballs which Mike says is not a football player but now he's a football team owner that's cool yeah so all of that, congratulations yeah. that's yeah, really cool so you'll that's be able to sign up to news. win uh, yeah so you'll be able to sign up to yeah. win uh, those items and they're all tokenized so it means like if I win uh, why well, I, I would obviously when I'm I'm part of <laughs> <laughs> See, that would be really weird, right? It would be really weird uh, if you yeah. won suddenly. Exactly. Malcolm won all I these footballs. Won all, won all these footballs. No, so let's say oh. you hypothetically won a football. You would be, you'd win the digital version of it, which is a viral. You'd be mm -hmm. able to trade that with somebody, swap it, sell it, whatever you wanted to do. Um, but you'd also be able to redeem. And with redeem, you put in your address and it gets shipped to you. Uh, okay, that's what I was going to uh, ask. Okay. How, how do you go from the digital to the physical? Because, I mean, I guess... You know, maybe I'm an old yeah. guy, but I'm thinking to myself, like, if I have this amazing, like, you know, wallet, and it's like a vintage wallet, and I have the digital token for the wallet, I'm thinking, what use is the digital 
version of the wallet if I don't have it in my hands because it's like what's I, you know. Uh, well, Steve, let's say let's 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 take that example and keep going. Now, let's say you've been collecting wallets for a long time, and you now have over ten thousand wallets. I, I do. I have a whole wall here full of wallets. It's <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So the wife calls this the wallet money. room. Yeah. yeah, yeah not the have, vaults. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so at some point, at some point, you're like, you know what? I never actually touch any individual wallet. I have so many wallets, but I would like to show off my collection. Yeah. Um, so that's one reason digitization would be helpful. The other th the reason is, let's say that your vault, your wallets were very uh, fragile, and you wanted them kept in a very, you know, special place. Like yeah. if it was wine in a wine vault, or coins yeah. in a wine yeah. vault, or, or my wallets in my um, vault. Exactly. Exactly. Your wallets in the vault. <laughs> okay, so that's the second point. This third thing is, is let's say that you are a trader or a collector. Um, the wallets, if you're trying to trade them, are much, much easier to trade if they're tokenized because you can, you can essentially transfer ownership, not possession, ownership of an item instantly. Okay, so let's say that I was a collector of snow globes and you're a collector of wallets and you're like, you know what? I really don't have any cool snow globes, but I see you have a snow globe with a wallet inside of it. That'd be really cool. <laughs> could, I trade you, could I trade you one of my cool wallets for your snow globe that has a wallet inside of it? And I'd say, great. Well, you could text it to me. You could literally text me the ownership of a wallet and I could text you the ownership of a snow globe that has a wallet in it because they're all tokenized. Okay. So, so the applications for this then keep going and there's like a hundred more things that so our audience will come up with. Here's where right? I get right. stuck and maybe other people get stuck with this too. I, I, that all makes sense. I guess the yeah. question is what happens if something happens to the physical item? Like fire, well, the physical, theft, water damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's why, so, the, so, you're, so you know warehouses today uh, have this uh, concept called bonding. Yes. So basically, you know, this the, where this starts out is with bonded warehouses. So okay. all the places where merchandise okay. is sitting. Like a lot of the stuff that sits in warehouses is, is uh, normal, everyday bonded warehouses. And it has the same risk associated with, with any other item. Yeah, I got it. I used to collect wine this way where I would buy it and it was stored in, in bond. And I didn't have any physical. So, okay, this is a good example because I've, I've traded in wine um, over the years. Um, after I got my wine diploma, and I've literally been buying and selling expensive wine, but I never had it in my possession. Right, right. But of course, I handed the token on to someone else, and now they have physical possession of that wine, and I've made my profit on buying it. Ownership. Behind, yeah. Right. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Possession and ownership. By deep right, not possession, ownership. I never possessed it. It was never in my physical possession. It was always, I owned yeah. the wine. It was in bond in a warehouse in Basingstoke, which is outside of London. And then at some point I sold it on to someone else and they took um, ownership of the wine. Whether they drank it and took it into possession, I don't know. But presumably yeah. they invested to hold it because of its value going up. So now I get it because it's something that it really resonates with something I've done before, which is literally trading wine and never actually having it in my hands. It was always in a, in a warehouse. Well, I've used this example now in two talks. I gave a talk yesterday in Austin uh, and it was, it was great. And also I used this example in Hong Kong last week. And I said, look, I said, any one of you in this room could build a massive wine trading business in a week because all you would need is to create virals, these tokens for mm -hmm. the items and allow people to start trading them. So if you had a big warehouse, access to a big warehouse, or you had access to an owner of a lot of wine who's sitting in a warehouse, you would just start taking pictures and that put that information up in the blockchain and you would obviously need a redemption function. So yeah. when somebody says, I actually want the wine, it would have to go somewhere to somebody who could go into the warehouse, pick, pack and ship that item and send it out. Uh, and I said, right. it, it is literally, you would have almost no technical investment. This is like millions and millions and millions of dollars of investment you could shortcut and get right to the business. And I said, I hope that in a year when I come back to see you guys, that there's a wine millionaire in here or two, <laughs> uh, as well as the Magic the Gathering card millionaire, as well as the coin, you know, million, et cetera, et cetera. So um, these kinds of businesses will get built just mm -hmm. way we're beyond gonna, our- We're gonna have energy. to take this wine conversation offline and talk about it for real, because I, I literally got my wine diploma. <laughs> I've studied wine. I have the certificates and everything. And I've literally traded in wine for years. 
And well, you you are you are you are you the ideal. In fact, a guy came up to me and he said, "I'm your oh, target no. candidate. I've been targeted. I've been marked yeah. with the bullseye on my yeah. head now." <laughs> yeah, some some guy same said to me there was some sort of um, there's some sort of data service which tracks, uh, I guess, uh, something about the wine status. Uh, I forget what it was called, and I like literally had no idea what he was talking about. But but if you were in the wine ecosystem and you were trading, like it was something that made sense, and then. Uh, he was like, well, yeah, if I took an API that feed and I put it next to this marketplace and you'd have all this data on the wine and the wine prices. I was like, yeah, dude, like, keep there's going. some really interesting yeah. things out there. Oh, wow. like, there's like wine, there's like all these online wine exchange websites that look like you're though, looking at the NASDAQ, but it's just, it's mm-hmm. not, but it's just the wine deck. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Definitely the wine yeah, deck. Almost. Yeah. yeah. The wine, the wine SE. Yeah. Yes. I, I forget the name of it, but it's, um, it's really like the same kind, of, same kind of thing, but what they've done is they've got data feeds going into all the different wine merchants. So when mm-hmm. wine is actually sold, then they're listing the latest prices on, you know, the hottest and most, you exactly. know, expensive wines. Exactly. Yeah. And their whole focus is like, you know, the, well, we won't get into the details of it, but it's like in the, you know, a lot of people trade in the French wines and there's five different mm-hmm. levels of, or five different categories or groups of wines that people tend to train, uh, trade. Yeah. And yeah. um, so, of yeah. course, they're just yeah. focusing on the high-end expensive wines and a few other countries exactly. as well. But, so, yeah, it's the same kind of thing. I, 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 Yuri, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to speak wine to him, Malcolm. Speak wine to him, and he gets yeah, it. Just yeah. talk, just tell you, from now on, anybody that wants to talk with me about anything, you know, that's, you know, talking just, about wine, vodka. How wine. does this, exactly, how does this work in, in wine? Yeah, how does this work so, in the wine trade? Yeah, that's fine. But, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, so we should talk about this offline because maybe there's some people I could connect you with in London and we could figure out how to actually – build a use case out of tokenizing uh, high-end expensive wines that tend to sit in warehouses in bond or uh, even outside of bond, but they're, they're still held and are not in possession. Um, well, just imagine you and I right. sitting at a party and you have this fantastic bottle of Mouton and I have this fantastic bottle of Lafitte and you could literally text me that bottle and I could text you a bottle. I mean, how cool is that? I was thinking Lynch Bosch, so cool. but that's okay. I want to be at that party right now. <laughs> I'd like a bottle of uh, oh, right. okay. All right. bottle of Krug, okay. Krug please. <laughs> hey, if you have Mouton, I'll take a Mouton. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to meeting you when you come for your visit in London because when you do your trips around the you know the world, you're very welcome to come and visit us, and we can fantastic. You can do yeah. a live episode with Yuri, and I can pop in from London, or vice versa, or yeah. meet you at one of the yeah. events or conferences. That'd be great fun. Yeah, Malcolm. Yeah, now we'll that longer. now that you guys have gotten into the esports arena with with this deal with um, Mike Tyson, where do you see esports headed and your involvement in that area? Yeah, so, you know, esports is, I think, a, a challenging area as it stands today. As you know, team owners have bid up the prices for these franchises to like astronomical numbers. I honestly, I see a huge correction in terms of the, the, the value of these franchises. Uh, over time because, you know, they don't have video rights they can go sell to TV networks. They don't own the actual games. Uh, Those things can change, you know, arbitrarily by the game publisher. And then, of course, the teams themselves are comprised of kids who age out really, really fast. Like, you don't get a 5 or 10 or 15 or 20-year career of uh, players that you can then, you know, of course, build bigger fan bases and merchandise and so forth. So I think they have a really, really challenging problem with regards to economics. Uh, For us... I think we help them in that we accelerate their ability to engage audiences and sell merchandise. Uh, and so what we did with a, a group like Fanatic uh, mm-hmm. is we increased the stream engagement like 4X because people were so excited they were getting virtual items in real time. So imagine in, if this were a real time, if it were a live a video stream, in a chat session, you could actually engage people to go and then if they set up, if they opened up a Wax account, they could then start to receive virtual items. You could literally create coin chat stickers. You could create, you know, your own essential, you know, uh, non-fungible token, an NFT is what we call it. But you could create your own literally one-of-a-kind blockchain assets and send them to folks. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they could get them. And then you could say, oh, and then we have tokenized merchant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not not crypto. I'm I'm talking about virtual items. So uh, in a video game context, that could be like, you know, it could be a, a, a picture, it could be an avatar, it could be a skin, it could be a, an, a, the equivalent of emoji, right? Okay. It's like a one of a kind emoji. Um, so you, giving those away is really cool. People get them. And then you could then transition to merch 
that merchandise that's actually physical, like that's viral so cool. stuff we were talking about. That's really, really So the way we work with esports is we accelerate their ability to engage with audiences because they can send them things instantly. They can buy things instantly, so they'll spend a lot more. So when they when they open up the store, they can literally blow out you know six figures or seven figures worth of merchandise instantly because everyone's engaged and they're literally one click away from purchasing. That's mm -hmm. so cool. Wow. So that that's really where we fit in. We fit in in the commerce. So Wax is a is a is a blockchain for commerce for e-commerce. It's a first protocol chain designed for e-commerce. And so anywhere you see e-commerce occurring. There's probably an angle that Wax, you know, could could interact with it, and in some places it'll create an incredible amount of value. Mm -hmm. really That's great. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So going going back to your announcement just for a minute about uh, Mike Tyson, he, is he going to announce his involvement with Wax on the show when he's uh, interviewed by Jimmy Kimmel? Yeah. So he'll be on Jimmy Kimmel, uh, or yeah, he'll be on Jimmy Kimmel, and. Um, uh, uh, there should be a link to the giveaway, which will um, indicate, first of all, that it's on Fan Control Football League and that it's powered by Wax. So you'll be able to get the, that, that um, tokenized merchandise through the Wax platform. That is such an, awesome. a, what, what we'll do for anybody who's watching or listening is we'll put the links down below that for anything that's already available so people can check it out. Because of course, yeah. you may want to yeah. get yourselves a, a signed football from Mike Tyson or any of his other merchandise that he puts out there. So we'll try to give you guys as early access as we can, but I'm sure this stuff won't last very long. <laughs> no, there's a very small number of them. Um, and then they'll, they'll, they'll make some for sale uh, as well. Uh, but there'll be, again, a very small number. So. Yeah. Okay. Super cool. Any, awesome. any uh, final things you want to let, uh, let everyone know about where Wax is going? Cause we'll, we'll have you back, of course, you know, couple weeks or a month, whatever, to give us some other updates, especially after these announcements. But is there anything that you want to just leave everyone with before we go today? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing is, you know, as we move these big dApps, Viral and Vigo from the test net, they're still running on the test net uh, to the main net now that the main net is live. We'll mm -hmm. see a huge surge in users transitioning over as well as transactions trans transitioning over. So, uh, and then we'll also be launching a developer portal uh, which will be fantastic for all the developers to have all the resources they need in one place. So I, I guess the first thing is like, watch this space, uh, you know, wax.io slash blog, uh, you know, and our Twitter and telegram announcement channels are fantastic places to see what's going on. Uh, and you know, people are participating in the token swap. I think that's going really well for folks. Um, and stay tuned. There's so, so many cool things launching. The developer community is literally hundreds and hundreds of folks producing things. Uh, well beyond our, you know, 90 person staff awesome. uh, could ever do. So yeah. we're excited to see what's coming. And we should probably give awesome. everyone a reminder as well that because of mainnet that they need to swap their tokens from the old ERC over to Wax mainnet, they've got till the yeah, 30th, yeah. 30th yeah. of August, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. All that information is on the site. It's it's, it's step by step. There's videos okay. that walk you through it. Okay. Uh, now the, the the ecosystem is produced. I think there's at least three or four wallets now that will help you with the swap. Scatter uh, was the first one, and then Squirrel, uh, uh, Wax, that Blocks.io, and then the um, uh, Leos Links is now live. Uh, the 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 Android version you can do voting within, not within the iOS version, and then the desktop version is coming out, and you'll be able to do it on that soon. That's so, very very lots cool. of choices. Great. Yeah, awesome. That's very good. Great, great. Congratulations with this um, this announcement with Mike Tyson being on Jimmy Kimmel and forming the partnership with you guys. That's, that's super news. It's great to see some sort of mainstream adoption happening because that's what we all want in crypto. And this is great. So congrats for that. We're, um, we're super excited yeah, for thanks. you. Cool. Yeah, we, we are too. There's a lot more coming around, around stuff with Fan Control Football League. The, Mike Tyson, though awesome, uh, is just the beginning. And um, I, use, I, use, I, I quote Mike Tyson at least like once, once, once a month. Um, <laughs> you, probably know, you probably know the quote I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Go on. Yeah. Everyone right. has a plan. Should they get punched in the face? There you go. You're right. <laughs> yep. That's it. You nailed it. It's it's a brilliant quote. I, I use it all the time quote. as well. Yeah. And one of my trainers actually trained with Mike Tyson and he was like, he was like, no, 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 it's legit. When he hits <laughs> it, it's like a truck backing up into you. It is insane. Wow. So, yeah, it's no joke. <laughs> wow. Well, we'll, we'll still, but we'll there's some, by the way, 
there's some great YouTube videos on his fighting technique. Uh, I give him a lot of credit. I mean, he's, he's, he's been able to do something that was really fantastic. There's some great ones on, that really break down like how he does it and, and why it's so, why it was so phenomenal. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. If you're into that. If you've got any, if you've yeah, got any yeah. links to that, just drop them over to me and I'll put them up on the, uh, on the show is just so oh, yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nothing to do with check out Mike Tyson <laughs> after watching this, then by all means pop on but over. It, yeah. but, it, but if you're into like precision, like uh, pugilistic art form, <laughs> definitely there will be people who are. So. For you. Oh yeah. That's just, so. Absolutely. Well, listen, Malcolm, thank you so much for taking the time out, coming into the office early for us. I appreciate that as well. Yeah. Yeah, see my office here. It's fantastic. Yeah, I know. It it's like the virtual <laughs> digital version of Malcolm, who's joining us today from Waxland. <laughs> so thank you for, for checking in with All us. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for listening, watching, subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell on your way out if you're watching us here on YouTube. To the moon. Until next time. To the moon. Thanks, guys. So, uh, Thanks.